Welcome my SOC Universe to the first Premier League slash Eredivisie re review of the weekend. Both leagues started this weekend. It is the first that I'm actually make a dedicated Eredivisie review. Now, uh, as you can see in the background, I'm very proud. I have a lot of nice Premier League jerseys up there. And I even managed to do two Eredivisie. Yeah, I have Ajax. Ajax here, Ajax here in the middle. So really proud of that and I realized oh I have to wear one of these and I don't really know which one I want to keep it as much as possible so I went with the old Liverpool they are the champions and had a um, successful start to the season as we will see uh, so yeah what that means for me is and more jerseys are needed definitely uh, let's get started with the weekend I mean the whole thing started Saturday um, early afternoon in uh, at Craven Cottage, close to River Thames, uh, with a London dog between Fulham and Arsenal. Um, Fulham could have scored early, nice new jerseys, which reminds me, I am a uh, Premier League jersey, such as review will be the first one with that background. I'll be shooting them soon and I will release them bit by bit over the next few days. But as soon as Arsenal got the lead, I think there was no turn to turn, turning back. I didn't understand why Arsenal had, had to play in blue, but you know. I guess you need you need to sell these jerseys too. Like I said, opens the scoring. There have been chances done on both sides, but um, second half it was all first Gabriel with a header, his first uh, Villian, so the two new signings uh, combining it, and Aubameyang with a wonderfully played great goal in the 57th, killing off the game. Could have been more at that moment. Arsenal having a bright start, but you know it is just Fulham, probably the team that everyone. Uh, is betting on getting uh, relegated. So we have to see how this points out, but at least a positive start for Arsenal. A surprising win by Crystal Palace to a very early goal uh, through Zaha. And then uh, he even scored a second one, which was uh, the the lot. I was surprised because I thought Southampton will uh, beat Crystal Palace. The big game. And isn't, isn't it great if a big game lives up to, to the building between Liverpool and Leeds? We knew if Klopp versus Bielsa, that's gonna be a game to watch. And it was, it was really gripping, especially the first half. I mean, if you like your defensive soccer, this was the worst game ever. But from, from the get-go, um, Liverpool on the front foot, um, ball in the box, I think it's a uh, new signing Koch, penalty, pretty clear if you have the hand dangling out there like that and Salah steps up and very with mud, without much humor um, humorless converts the penalty then I thought yeah this is going that route no 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 Leeds came back and had actually a few chances fought themselves back in, into the game and took uh, advantage of the fact that you know on the back side and on the side Liverpool was not uh, on the height yet Long ball by Phillips and Harrison just goes past Alexander Arnold in in in, in, in the box circles and makes it one one in the twelfth. Um, game on, very interesting. Um, however, the defensive frailties of Leeds were also there, and after Robertson corner, Van Dijk heads it in. I thought the goalie had the hand had there could have probably saved it, but it was a very powerful header from close range. Ten minutes later. Bamford with an equalizer after a horrible uh, Virgil van Dijk assist who just nonchalantly wanted to play it uh, out and it was wasn't aware of the uh, of Bamford who puts it in it 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> Salah then says no absolutely not and with a really great strike I mean just in the near corner up up there top top shelf really nicely done 3-2 at the half and you knew that there will be more goals coming. Um, yeah, more goals were coming, uh, but uh, the weird thing is that while well, the first uh, half it was kind of a back and forth in Liverpool, the beginning good, then it was mostly lead, and then uh, Li Liverpool got a little bit better again. Uh, in the second half, I think Liverpool had mostly control, and just in one of these phases where Liverpool actually seemed to be have have him come to all, uh, Elda Costa plays the ball to Klich, who has a wonderful touch, uh, takes the ball, puts it in the net in the 66th. You thought, wow. 
3-3 and a great free kick that just misses the mark. However, on the other side, um, Virgil van Dijk had a goal disallowed. There were other chances uh, for Liverpool and in the last 15, 20 minutes, you really had the feeling, yeah, Liverpool is not going, going for the kill. And in the end, it was a Salah penalty after a stupid Rodrigo foul. Then two new signings for Leeds uh, are basically their downfall and so it ends 4-3 Liverpool, but what a game. And after the game, I think Klopp said, this is the perfect game. We won, we feel good about ourselves, but I know I can show them a lot of stuff that they have to do better. Typical coach speak, I would say. So that was a lot of fun to watch it. I really was hoping it will be, and it was. Uh, Newcastle uh, beats West Ham, which I, what I found interesting, all the commentary I have heard since is that West Ham looked awful and Newcastle got an easy win through Wilson Hendrick. When I watched the highlights this morning, there were many Newcastle, uh, West Ham chances. So uh, I believe the pundits more than the highlights. I think it was a poor cut, 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 cut of the highlights. Uh, speaking of poor performance, I think uh, Leicester Maroon, uh, showed up at West Brom uh, and I'm really looking forward to review those, jer uh, those jerseys. And yeah, after kind of even still Leicester being the better team, uh, it all went in one way in the second half. New signing Castani from Atalanta puts Leicester in front and then two penalties for Jamie Vardy, who always scores against West Brom. I think every time he played uh, at the Hawthorns, was, it was the stadium name, every time he scored. Uh, it's really funny and he even uh, wanted to hear the boos from the crowd. Oh, oh, oh. So, Golden Boot winner also off to a good start. Then a very interesting game between Spurs and Everton. Uh, Everton started brightly and Richard Leeson should have put the ball away, I think, after 15 minutes and make it 1-0. Uh, but I have to say the game first was Everton, then it shifted towards Spurs and again another jersey that I'm really looking forward to take apart. This, what Spurs is offering this season. That will be a lot of churches that I will just claw in. Um, so it was rather, even though it actually was switching towards Spurs because they had really good chances on Kaka, the most notable one where Son uh, could have set up Kane but then went for Dele Ali or then Doherty had a great chance. So uh, it was very, very interesting, but they also had a great, James Rodriguez, a few great touches. You, you could see that uh, if he gets into the team, this could be really, really exciting for uh, Everton fans. But yeah, uh, for a rather even first half, second half, what happened to Spurs? Nothing there suddenly. And after Dinia uh, free kick, Calvert-Lewin heads it home. Mourinho Wright will say the foul was about five meters or even more further up. So, I mean, Everton stole a few inches there. Uh, and I have to, have to say it was great to see Mourinho and Angelotti actually get, 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 getting on quite well. Those are probably the two most successful managers of the 2000s. Maybe there are others in there, but I, they are definitely coaching royalty. And then it kind of feels weird that now that they're kind of towards the end of their cohort coaching career that you know they're showing up not at the big big clubs i mean both have coach real madrid and other big teams uh it's now spurs against everton which are not not the top top level of those spurs is definitely a bigger team at the moment than everton although i think when i look at uh overall over the decades i think everton Maybe a bit slightly more successful. I have to look. I have to. Look. I always consider Everton among the top seven teams in history of England. Wolves within ten minutes as two 0 up at Sheffield United. So that was easy. Um, there were chances, but no more goals. Jimenez and Saiz scoring in the third and the sixth, and then Chelsea uh, getting a win, but it was kind of ugly. Uh, Jorginho with his typical, typical hop at the hop penalty, then Trossard actually gets the equalizer for Brighton. Uh, uh, after Reece, and then a few minutes later, Reese James just unleashes a shot, top corner. Another great goal. There were many great goal scores uh, uh, this, this, this weekend, and Zuma uh, deflected shot makes it 3 1. You could see glimpses of what Timo Werner could bring. As I said, uh, Timo Tim Werner is not necessarily my favorite player, but hey. Maybe he will show at Chelsea what he, he can do. And so, yeah, ends 
the first round because the two Manchester teams have yet to play against the opponent, both in the Aston Villa look one, which is Aston Villa. So the first table, you know, the first tables are always kind of uh, so and so. We have Leicester and Arsenal top, then Chelsea is in there, Wolves, Newcastle, Liverpool with a huge, huge win. And thanks to the Liverpool game, we have a goal average of 2.87, oh, is it 6.7, That's a pretty good start. I think it's the highest that we had so far there. Let's see how it will go into the season. And as I said, four games are missing. Uh, we already have West Brom and Fulham on the bottom of the table next weekend. And you know, again, this might change. I look it up um, just before the video. This is the, how the schedule is slated now. Um, we have another London derby for Ar Arsenal between Arsenal and West Ham. Uh, Manchester United is coming back against Crystal Palace. We have a big one between Chelsea and Liverpool. That's going to be one to watch. Um, and also Man City is going back against Wolves. And that was one of the games of the season last year. Uh, Everton starts against West Brom. And Leeds United against Fulham could also be interesting. I am... Leeds United is an intriguing proposition. Let's go Eredivisie. I actually watched a little bit. I saw that Feyenoord uh, beat Zwolle 2-0 uh, with two goals by Bergois, who could have made uh, three. I mean, it was a penalty was in there. Uh, I thought their jerseys were interesting, um, but it was a well-deserved win there. Um, the game and I fortunately I couldn't find the highlights, at least not on a quick one. It was Emmen against Fenlo, uh, 3 5. Uh, Emmen had a 1 0 lead at the half, uh, had a 2 0 lead. <laughs> then uh, um, it was equalized, it went 3 2 Fenlo's way, then another e e equalized, and then own goal in the 90th minute. Says the game, Fenlo's away, who in stoppage time makes a uh, fifth one. So, absolutely. Uh, outstanding game. Not that you could say anything about that for Ajax, who were hampered by getting uh, Talia Fika sent off early for, yeah, by a lad of the law, it was a, a last man red card the way he was wrestling down uh, the. Now he handled the ball. He handled the ball and, and obstructed oh, a clear goal scoring chance. But Anthony, new signing after. Um, Tadic assist made it 1-0 for Ajax, uh, who then could hang on, actually had the better chances. I mean, Ajax, as we know, is the class of, of the league. The game that everyone was looking forward to was Groningen against PSV. Uh, the Aryan Robben comeback yeah, it ended after 28 minutes with a uh, hamstring injury to Robben. Suslov came on for him. We hope that he will come back because that would be rather underwhelming. Then Gakpo makes it 1-0 for PSV, who have now um, Rose, no, 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 not, um, Schmidt is the coach, who was also the first really successful South, but we're so curious what he will do at PSV. Um, they get the 1-0, have it at, at the half. Suslov equalizes for Groningen, but are coming right back. Marlen and then um, uh, very late Gakpo. Secure the win, although Marlon already missed the penalty uh, for four minutes before the third goal in the 83rd minute. So yeah, uh, this means that in the first table of the Eredivisie, we have Venlo with this huge win up there. For, and then, you know, all the big boys have won. PSV and Feyenoord probably a little bit more convincing than Ajax. Have to be seen where this is going. Uh, and in the next round, if we see, uh, let's look, uh, PSV play against Emmen, maybe more goals uh, in there. Wendler plays against Utrecht, who have not started, as did uh, Z, who now plays Wolle. So there we have a uh, direct uh, comparison. Ajax late against Valwijk, who is slated to be the worst team in the league. So maybe there are some goals in there as well. Feyenoord against Twente. Sounds in interesting. And I don't know, Groningen pro probably. Robin will, not, Robin will not play. Let's see. Anyway, let me know what you thought about uh, the games that I've been talking about. Uh, if you watched any anything, drop a line below what you thought about the things happening. I think the Liverpool game was probably the standout game, although, you know, there was one in Holland. Didn't see much. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.